Welcome to episode one of Panasonic's The Sound Experience, a series on the future of audio and mobility. And now Panasonic's Director of Marketing and Communications, Maria Rohr. Hey everyone, I'm Maria Rohr with Panasonic Automotive. In this automotive space, we're looking at all kinds of things relative to the sound experience, and particularly for the premium audio experience inside the vehicles. Today we're talking about one of my favorite subjects, which is how do you build that premium audio experience inside a moving vehicle, essentially your new safe space in uh, the world of this, this pandemic that we're all living in. We are going to be taking a look at the technical and creative processes that make these advancements possible and the people behind it. And I am particularly excited to have our Executive Vice President, Alan Kudla, with us, as well as our longtime partner and eight-time Grammy Award winner, Elliot Shiner, uh, and his son, Matt, who will join us to talk about how we get perfected premium audio into the vehicle. So with that, um, I want to introduce um, Alan and Elliot and maybe start with Alan first. What is it that you do at Panasonic? And also talk to me a little bit about where you see the premium audio future headed in this business. Well, thanks, Maria. Uh, of course, at Panasonic Automotive, we integrate in a lot of electronics into vehicles in the industry. We've been doing so for well over 60 some years. And But the you know history of Panasonic, I guess, sonic, right, is sound. And in our history, more than anything else, has been in audio and in sound. So in addition to all the exciting things we do in infotainment systems and, and, and sensing technologies and vision, now as things move forward, the history of our company and even in this industry all started in terms of automotive with sound, largest speaker supplier uh, in the world across different industries but in vehicle in particular. So we have a long history of expertise in that space. But once we get into premium audio, despite what we know about the in-vehicle characteristics and the environment and having relationships with automakers, really bringing in and having the privilege and opportunity to work with, with Elliot and team has changed everything for us. And in terms of capability and trends, uh, integrating in that experience and knowledge of music and sound, particularly in the, in the studio, has really changed things. And in terms of people's uh, listening experiences, people, have, I think, have always appreciated and uh, wanted to have that experience in the vehicle listening to music, right? It's that place of solitude. It's that place you can be by yourself. It's also a place where you can tune around because the, the passengers or drivers are in a fixed spot. So that's an important thing when you're creating sound as well. So really expanding uh, on the experience for people in vehicle for, for sound and music, I think, is taking off again. And, and even the trends that we're now seeing, right, people getting back into vinyl experiences and the rest. I think we hit a trend uh, or a time there with compressed audio and all the things that brought with it. And uh, I think there's a greater, not only nostalgic, but interest in more true audio experiences in the vehicle. And I think, uh, I think it's going to continue to move in that direction and be a good experience in vehicle. In order to really get some expertise in working with us on building that experience, we went to a heavy hitter with Elliot. Why, why and how did we meet Elliot and how long has this relationship been? Well, I'll let Elliot talk a little bit about that, but it goes back uh, probably nearly 20 years now. It was in the early 2000s when we got um, uh, associated with Elliot and mainly through, you know, one of uh, our staff members here, director of audio, Tom Dunn, uh, got together with Elliot in the early 2000s. And, and um, once we started that experience and that learning process, we were able to hook up with Acura as they were looking to change the experience in their vehicles and really move to a different level and bringing in and working with Elliot to combine Panasonic's knowledge of in-vehicle and his knowledge of everything to do with music and recording was just a great combination. For us, we were not interested at all in selling a system to put a name on it. It was all about the authenticity of, of what the sound would be. It had to be true, and Elliot was the same, right? So it wasn't that there couldn't have been other potential partners, but it needed to be the right match. And really the what Elliot brings to the party and has for all these years has been 
really wanting to honor and respect the musicians and how things were recorded and in the way they wanted it to be heard. So really uh, that's what brought it to us. It wasn't a, a numbers game for us. It was more of bringing in a true, rich, authentic experience and the combination of working with Elliot made that possible. Yeah, let me build upon that, the authenticity, and bring in Elliot at this point. Elliot, you have had the privilege, or maybe they have had the privilege of working with you. You've worked with the Eagles, to Fleetwood Mac, to Beyonce. Tell us a little bit about how you got into this business and uh, why and how do you go about perfecting studio sound for some of these amazing artists I started in the business in the 60s, late 60s. And it was a huge passion for me. I was a musician. And I was in a band that I knew wasn't going to make it. And I needed to do something else. At that moment, I had my uncle, who was a famous uh, jazz musician. And I told him what I wanted to do. And he said, let me introduce you to the right guy. He introduced me to uh, a record producer, engineer uh, named Phil Ramon. And he was a big time producer, but an even bigger engineer. In those days, there was no learning or craft at a school. There was no school. So you learned your, your craft from a mentor. And I had the benefit of Phil. So having that benefit, working with, in his studio and getting to do a lot of dates, that's sort of how I, I came about this. And I think I won my first Grammy about six years after I started. It was a quick turnaround. You know, ever since then, it's been a, a great move for me. It's been... A fabulous thing to spend your whole life making music. And originally I thought, well, if I'm not a musician, how am I going to do this? But that's what happened. Is it appropriate to say that you apprenticed your way to a Grammy? That That's fabulous. <laughs> yeah, I didn't apprentice to a Grammy, but I apprenticed for Phil for about one year and the technology in those days was a lot different than it is now. You basically had to learn how to mic an instrument, know where that instrument is going to be playing in a room full of other instruments. So I learned that entire craft from Phil, but the, the format for recording at that time was four track. So you had to figure out how to place instruments on the track. Like on one track, you would combine drums, bass, piano, guitars. On another track, it would be strings and horns. On get another one would be for the uh, artist and background singers. So you, you had to allow a lot of things. Now... We're dealing with unlimited tracks. It's not as complicated as it was back then. You needed to hear the music and know how it was going to come out. It, it, it's not, I'll record this music now and make a decision later what this is going to sound like and how it's going to be. You had to make your decisions right at the moment, right at that time you were recording. So it, it taught me a great deal about what to listen for and where instruments were in a mix against other instruments. And, uh, and Elliot, what were some of those specific lessons that brought you into the audio producing excellence that you're, you're working on today? It really wasn't myself that brought that there. When you're engineering and you do good work, and an artist likes what you do, they sometimes get it. Well, maybe it'd be good to have him produce the band along with the engineering. You know, they were able to save money by doing that. And they liked the idea that maybe 
what I brought them. So it just fell. It was right next to each other. It fell side by side. And I got into producing because the records I were doing were so good. When we met you and brought you into our piece of business, uh, the idea was to bring your studio <clears throat> producing expertise to Acura. So maybe I'll turn back to Alan just for a minute. Why and what was Acura looking for at the time? And what were we trying to achieve in this premium sound? Well, they were really trying to reinvent themselves. There was a lot of new competition coming in in the luxury audios, uh, auto space in general. And they really wanted to do something different. And I'm sure Elliot remembers well, but we introduced DVD audio uh, at that point in time. And they were very interested in it because it was a new technology and something new that Acura could wrap their head around. Uh, they were trying to improve the driving experience of their cars and really bringing themselves up a notch to compete in that industry. So in addition to things like DVD audio, it was it was time for, for them. They wanted to, they want the authenticity of the driving experience, authenticity of a music experience. They wanted to go high end and differentiate themselves. It was a good timing, right? Timing is always critical uh, in good business opportunities. And so what we were able to do and combine with Elliot, which I think he immediately resonated with them uh, based upon his story, his history, his success, and, and his desire to make, make it real, right? Don't just put my name on something and put it into a vehicle. We're going to do this right. And so not only did ha, has Elliot back then and continued to work with our engineers who have the in-vehicle experience and the Acura engineers, but he's always been involved and still is involved in sitting in the vehicles in the final tuning stages to make sure it's going to be right. And, and Elliot, um, looking at Acura's higher order objectives at the time, I believe this was the first time you've taken your, your expertise and brought it into a vehicle. Is that right? How did you attack this assignment? It began in the studio. We do a mix. And the only other place to listen when you're in there is in a car. So we take mix out to the car and listen to it. But 10 out of 10 times, the experience was horrible. You know, you'd listen to what you just did, probably with the artist, and say, did I do that? I mean, it was so bad sounding. You know, and, and I got it in my head at that point, especially with uh, DVD and 5.1 coming in, that cars should sound better you should be able to go out there and determine what you've just done. So that's what went through my mind when we did it. And Alan's right. Uh, it was a DVD entrance that encouraged that. I got called to speak at a DVD Empire panel. And as it turned out, literally every manufacturer that did audio system for cars was there. And I got in my head, well, I'm going to go to everybody and give them an idea. This is what I'd like to do. You guys have never had anyone who's responsible for creating music actually be responsible for playback. And literally all 10 uh, said, well, what do we need that for? However, a month later, Panasonic called me back. It was Tom Dunn who called me back and said, we have a client who might be interested in this thing. And I went to try it, went to a couple of shows and it got started like that. And they knew, Panasonic knew how important it was to make a car audio system that would not only be appealing to me, be appealing to artists. A guy might go in there and say, I know what this system sounds like. I'm going to hear this in my car. And that is eventually what happened. Oh, that's fabulous. <laughs> that's a great background. Um, if, if I look at what you've done with Acura and your experience with both the music industry and music inside the vehicle, um, your talent doesn't just stay with you. It runs in the family. I want to bring uh, your son, Matt Shiner, in at this point and talk a little bit about Matt, who's also a musician and a recording and mixing engineer in his own right. Welcome, Matt, and give us a little bit of background on what it is that 
you do in this in this business and how you're looking at the recording and producing industry in uh, the future of audio. Obviously, I've been I've been around what my father does since a pretty young age, and so I've, I've seen a lot of music happen in a lot of different ways, and decided that I wanted to get into that, and ended up getting educated in it, and then studying under him and working with him, and found a passion, you know, through some through that for some other roads off of that more, that led me into becoming a professional musician and touring for a living for a little while uh, and then also touring for a living as a, as a front of house engineer uh, with live bands and also I've, I've been running a studio in Los Angeles for the past few years as the manager and head engineer there that uh, it was Glenn Fry's former studio uh, so I've seen a lot of different angles on the industry and where it is right now. And what I'm really interested in uh, as somebody in, in my generation is preserving a, a desire and an appreciation for things that are of the utmost quality. Oh, that's, that's wonderful. And we've been blessed to bring you into our business as well. So, Elliot, there's something common that Dave Grohl, Zach Brown, and Joe Walsh all did. Can you tell me about it? With Dave Grohl, we were mixing uh, in surround sound. And it was pretty early on in the, in the world of DVD music. And I was doing the surrounds at Capitol. And they were doing other work at their studio in the West Valley. And when I get finished with the mix, I said, do you guys want to come down here? Do you want to, I mean, to send you a mix? What do you want to do? And they said, well, we don't really have anything to listen to up here. We're incapable of hearing a 5-1. I said, you know, let me get Acura to send you a car to listen to. Uh, I called Acura and I spoke to uh, one person there who said, can I bring up the car myself? And I said, absolutely. She went and brought the car up to Dave and the band was there and I sent a mix over to Dave and they went in the car, played the mix and were beyond belief about how it sounded and that's the way we actually did the mixing of that album in 5-1. I'd send a mix, they'd listen. And consequently, Dave went and bought a car. He was so impressed by what it sounded like and what it offered. With Joe, we were doing an event at Capitol. He hadn't heard the vehicle. This was uh, the RDX, the second car we did. And he got in there and listened to music that we did. In fact, I think I'd done Hotel California by that time, and he listened to Hotel California and was flipped out about stuff he hadn't heard in years and uh, went out and bought a car. And Zach Brown, he actually, at, at a Music Cares event before one of the Grammys, uh, Acura gave a uh, Music Cares TLX to auction off. And Zach actually bought it. He'd apparently heard what the sound system sounded like, and he immediately bid on the car. And he ended up getting it, and was because of what this offers and what musicians think about the system. They're totally blown away by it, but by what it offers, but it offers something for them to actually listen to a mix in the car and make a judgment. And with the Eagles, we, we actually were mixing the studio. And uh, when we finished the mix, we'd take the mix out to the car. And it would be me and Don and Glenn and uh, Timothy. And we'd go out and listen to it. And we'd make judgments as to what we thought needed to come down or go up. And we based what we heard in the car, as did Dave Grohl. 
So wait a minute. You're telling me that you actually, with these artists, mixed and listened and made decisions on their new recordings or albums based on the system in the car. That's true. And it's something that I always wished for, that that would happen, that that's what we wanted to happen. Because in the studio, you have nothing else to listen on but what you're doing it on. So you had that reference. You go out to the car, and it's in previous cases, it was a guess. Is this accurate? Probably not. You know, but having the system in the car with the Eagles, they knew it was accurate. And any change we did make was was accurate. So when I, now I'm learning something too. So when I started this segment with you, we were going to talk about the process and how we built this premium audio system with ELS in, in all of these models with Acura and this longstanding partnership. But what you're telling me is that we are revolutionizing the sound with the car system leading the way. Is that what you're saying? That's correct. It was kind of selfish in respect that all I was thinking about was the guys who actually work on these records and the producers and the artists. And they need the ability to actually get in a car and understand what that system is and say, it sounds like what we're doing. I mean, you couldn't do that in any of the cars before that. You know, you'd be given a system that was either had too much low end or too much top end, and you had to guess, at, you know, what was right and what was wrong. With this system, ever since the first one, even though it was less speakers and less of an amplifier, it was accurate in terms of what they were hearing, and they could make a decision based on that. Fabulous. Matt, you and Elliot are working uh, or have worked on the new TLX. So wh what was that process like? Give us a little inside view of how you, you two went about doing that. Uh, well, the TLX was the first car that I really, you know, was able to get into in terms of, of how, how we're working on these such that like I went out with, uh, with our other engineer, Mark Ziemba, for a week or two at the plant and he and I did the first round of tuning, which is usually, which he does alone. Um, and then Elliot will come in and, and do the second and third rounds. And it was really interesting because the closest parallel I had to something like that previously was um, being a live sound engineer where, you know, every night you go into a new venue and you, you're in a new room with a new system and you have to try and tune that room to your liking and get it to sound good. And this was like that, uh, except <laughs> there were speakers all over the place and glass and uh, vinyl and wood. And yet uh, it was close enough to what I had done in the past that I fell immediately into a groove with it and we ended up finishing that first round i think like 40 50 percent faster than mark says it usually gets done and fortunately when ellie came in for the second round he had to make so he told me uh much <laughs> many fewer uh revisions that's wonderful and and for those out there just uh in case you don't know the tlx just launched so it's out there in the marketplace so i encourage people to go ahead and check it out i've learned a lot from this session is there anything else you all would like to add as far as the future of audio and uh maybe for our engineer and producers uh a question for both of you is 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 there something that you always do without giving away your tuning secrets that uh, you always want to do to preserve that quality that you are talking about, Matt and Elliot, uh, that you'd be willing to share with the listeners? For me personally, you know, I have to listen to each speaker individually, even Tweeter. 
and just get some kind of definition of what this system might sound like and then gradually put in stuff and add on. I wouldn't feel comfortable actually giving away what we use uh, to tune with. Fabulous. How about you, Matt? I go for a similar process and I, I get maybe a little too into the weeds, but I'm really, really intense about making sure that every little thing sounds good and, and, and there's nothing remotely offend. You know, if you were to just listen to, like you said, just listen to only the tweeters that that should still sound good in its own way and everything should, there should be absolutely nothing offensive, nothing to take issue with uh, and everything should sound good on its own. Alan, what, what has it been like to have this triangle of Acura, our artists and expert producers and Panasonic involved in all this? Uh, how and why does this work? Well, it, I mean, it's been a phenomenal experience, right? I, I think those who have a passion and an enjoyment for music uh, have even a greater appreciation when, when people like Elliot and Matt are a part of the party and and what they bring to the whole thing. The whole, it comes right back to what we started with, I think, in this discussion and the authenticity, the quality you could hear from Matt, right? Um, he wants to preserve the integrity and the high quality uh, going forward of audio systems. That's, that's critically important. You know, Elliot touched upon, you know, what the artists bring and the artist experience. And, and you know, I, I'm think, I think back to some of the earlier days when we were involved with Elliot and, and, we had musicians and, and artists in vehicles as well. Uh, Elliot, I don't know if you remember, but even back in Detroit when we had um, uh, Duke Fakir, right, uh, come in and listen to vehicles, and Johnny yeah. Trudeau, Johnny Trudeau sitting in there getting emotional, <laughs> all right, about things that he heard in a system. I mean, it, those experiences are sorry, but even beyond anything that we gain and benefit from the business experience, right? It's just, it's an emotional, passionate thing that is, is great to be a part of. So, um, you know, we got to keep this going. There's a lot of passion in the world for music, right? It does a lot of wonderful things for people. And if we can be a part of that going forward and, 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 and treating it in an authentic way, the way the musicians want you to experience their music, the way they created it, then it's worth everything that we do to do it right. Uh, I think that's a great summation. Um, um, obviously, Alan, you've been in this business a long time with automotive mobility and electrification, but there's nothing quite like the audio experience that we have in this part of the business, right? Absolutely agree. I've got to say, you know, that since we've been doing this, it's pretty much been rated the number one system in the world. There is no other system made by any company that compares to what we do. In Business Week in 2018, we were named the best audio system in the world. Yeah. So we've had that proof. And the fact that it's meant to be for musicians, it, it means so much to me that it's that and that other people will listen because these guys listen. It's not just another car system. They, they don't go in there just to listen. They actually work in there. Yeah, there, there hasn't been a, a single uh, musician or, or person in the music industry that we've taken into the car to check out the system who hasn't been incredibly impressed, which is a huge testament, I think. I mean, those are, those are the people who know. Matt, Elliot, Alan, thank you all very much. Thank you, Maria. Thanks, Maria. Thank you. Change does not wait for innovation to catch up. Powered by Panasonic. The Sound Experience, available on all of your favorite podcast platforms. For more information on the Mudhouse Media Podcast Network, go to mudhousemedia.com.